The National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has declared null and void the suspension of a former governor of Kaduna State, Ahmed Makarafi. Now, recall that the PDP Tundun Wada ward in Kaduna State had suspended Makarafi for alleged anti-party activities. Uh, in the suspension notice signed by the chairman, Tundun Wada ward said Aliyu, um, Saidu Aliyu, I beg your pardon, and five others, Makarafi was accused of being self opinionated and intolerant of dissenting views, claiming that he uh, was being engaged in anti-party activities. Now, reacting to the suspension in a new statement issued on Monday, May 15, 2023, PDP spokesperson Debo Ologwamba uh, declared that the suspension is null and void with no effect. Joining us to discuss this is Ose Aneni. He's a PDP chieftain. Ose, it's good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening. Always a pleasure to be here. Yes. Um, one would have thought that with the PDP um, in court trying to, um, in the words of your presidential candidate, um, get back his mandate, um, the drama must have subsided in every part of the country. But unfortunately, this is the case in uh, Kaduna State. So I'll ask you, is the PDP in Kaduna on the brink? Um, it isn't. I think this is more... Um, an example of what happens when bad behavior goes um, unpunished. Um, we have seen political actors use this tactic. Uh, if you recall, in the APC, they, they got rid of their national chairman by suspending him at the world level. Um, they got rid of uh, Oche Secondos, the PDP national chairman, by suspending him at the, or purporting to suspend him at the world level. And uh, most, mo most recently, um, they've tried to get rid of um, the PDP national chairman, Ayu, again with a world level suspension backed by an ex party court injunction. And you can see that Labour is also experiencing the same thing. When political actors um, disagree at the national level, uh, because this tactic has been seen to work, you find these curious suspensions of national officers um, uh, playing out. I think what frustrates me maybe more as a PDP member is, you know, and every time I come on air, I talk about our party's constitution. Our constitution says only the National Executive Committee can discipline or suspend a member of the National Executive Committee. And McCarthy, you know, qualifies to be a member of NEC um, on multiple levels. So first of all, he's a former chairman. That qualifies him. Second of all, he's a board of trustee member. That also qualifies him. Third of all, he's a former governor. That qualifies him. Fourth of all, he's a former senator. You know, so he, he, he's, he's immune almost from any, any disciplinary action not taken by the neck. And five gentlemen in his wards cannot purport to suspend him. I think what we will probably see play out is, again, you'll see a court, you know, giving a, a court injunction, an ex parte motion, uh, restraining McCarthy from presenting himself as either a BOT member or a member of NEC, um, because, again, that tactic has, has been seen to be quite effective in Nigeria's political space. But the publicity secretary was absolutely correct. It's not recognized in our constitution. A ward cannot suspend a member of NEC, which McCarthy is. Um, but, you know, Nigeria's political space is very curious. So we're just, in, it's interesting to see how it plays out. I, I, just, I, I just want to say, worthy of note in this conversation, and, and similar, similarities here, obviously, um, is saying the PDP is fond of leaving um, issues or matters arising. Instead of dealing with it, they let it slide, and then, of course, it comes back to bite them. Um, we've seen uh, many people asking for the heads of Governor Wike, for the heads of uh, the likes of the governor of Oyo State, even though uh, the governor's forum is set to um, honor them, not just for the work they've done in their state, but how they've been helpful in the party. But then there are those who are on the one side who are saying, these people have been an involved in anti-party practices. Why are we applauding them instead of you know, dealing with the problem that's at the root? So does the PDP have a problem with facing issues head on as opposed to sweeping it under the bed? So I'll speak to McCarthy's case first before I come to the national. Um, McCarthy, um, like I said, was a former governor. Uh, in 2019, when he, he ran for 
the PDP's presidential ticket. I actually worked on his campaign at the time. Um, our campaign to get the ticket was un unsuccessful. But I can tell you that I interacted with him. And yes, he is very opinionated, uh, as I am, as are most members of the PDP. But he, he isn't a dictator, you know. So when I read the reason for the suspension being that he's self-opinionated and he imposes his will and doesn't listen, um, that wasn't true. I was much younger in, in 2019, and we led a critical part of, of his campaign, and he did listen to us. And I have, you know, anecdotal testimonies of, of my personal experience and others with McCarthy. If you recall, he stepped into the gap when, as an interim caretaker chairman, when we were having uh, problems within the PDP. And no one accused him of being a dictator at the time. Um, but, you know, if you speak to anti-activity, um, anti-party activity, usually it plays out in election results. PDP won Kaduna State at presidential election. PDP delivered all three senatorial candidates, um, senators elect at the just concluded senatorial uh, election in 2023. We have 10 out of, I think, 16 um, House of Rep members. Um, APC had four. I think some other parties uh, shared two amongst themselves. So if you look at uh, elect electoral results, uh, McCarthy won his, his district. He was one of the first uh, um, constituencies that delivered for president, pre our presidential candidates at Tiku in McCarthy local government area, even in Kaduna. So I, you know, it's curious when you see the world accusing him of anti-party and working against the party when he was front and center and led the charge in Cardinal State to the point that Cardinal, you know, delivered one of the best uh, electoral results for PDP in the just concluded 2022 election. So again, I think it's just um, maybe state level saber rattling or a disagreement between McCarthy and some other uh, person. And again, it's unfortunate to see them use this tactic, you know, instead of sitting down and resolving it like adults, they violate our constitution and um, and um, purport to suspend members that they cannot support. Um, they cannot suspend. Taking it up to the to the national, and you did ask a very valid question about maybe the PDP is an architect of its own way was maybe if we are stepped in and um, impose some sanctions on candidates or or members of the party and chieftains who were acting in a way and manner that was indefensible. Maybe these types of things, you know, would not have played out. Um, I think the National has decided to take a more conciliatory approach. Um, as you know, some members were suspended and their suspensions were reversed. I think the party recognizes, or in, in its wisdom, the party wants to, to sort of like put out an olive branch um, and is hoping that you know this olive branch is also met with good faith from people who have been actively and publicly working against the interests of the party. Um, I don't know if it work. I'm, I'm skeptical personally. I think bad behavior shouldn't be rewarded or accommodated. Um, but we are party members, and if the national leadership of the party wants to take a more uh, reconciliatory approach to resolving these issues, uh, we'll see how it plays out. I don't think it will work, but... Um, time will tell. Let's talk about, you know, the, the, those who say the PDP is now a shadow of itself. Um, uh, many pundits have said that the PDP might not stand the test after this election cycle and all of the tribunal rulings. But let's look at the new man at the Elm of Affairs. He's acting, obviously. But what does he bring to the table and does he have the capacity to hold the party together? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, our acting national Ch chairman Damagun is an ambassador. He was an ambassador, so he's a diplomat. And I think, regardless of whatever skill set he brings to the table, his ability or his his grasp of diplomacy, I think you know, coming to the party at this particular point where there are warring factions all over the country. Uh, you mentioned Wiki, you mentioned Shay Makinde, for instance. Um, I've seen them on your channel. Uh, hobnobbing to, with the um, APC president-elect, even though we do have a, a, a case in court. I, I think that Amagun, um believes that diplomacy uh, might resolve this crisis. Uh, he does have the ability and the chops to push pull it through if anyone um, can. 
um, act with China and IU was a, a little bit more uh, confrontational, a little bit more of a revolutionary because of his uh, ideological background. But uh, it, 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 I, I think that's what he brings. I think he brings diplomacy to the table. Again, you know, I'm happy to say it's public. What will, I what, what will diplomacy work. do? Because where the PDP <laughs> is right now, I don't think, I don't know, I'm not a party man, but from uh, someone who's looking from the outside in, what can diplomacy do? You have erring members who are being given a pat on the back, and then they're saying, oh, well, we'll, we'll look into it. Uh, and then, you, of course, you have several other cracks within the party. There are people who feel that some, some other, you know, some other people are protected lambs or oxen. So again, I don't know where the place of diplomacy comes in here and, and how much weight it carries. So, so a lot of people um, don't realize that we are still in election season. And so the judicial challenge is, is just one arm. We had our campaigns, we had the elections. The judicial challenge is one arm, the last leg of the electoral process. And so it's, it's, we can, it's not done and dusted. We cannot, this is not the time for a post-mortem. Um, I think we still need to keep a united house. Um, that helps our, our core challenge, I think. You can see what's happening in Labour, for instance, where um, a, new, a new acting chairman is trying to um, torpedo their court case. So I, 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 I think, again, we don't just have a presidential candidate that we are challenging. We don't just have a presidential candidate. We have governorship um, petition that we won uh, that are being challenged or that we are challenging, as with the Senate, as with reps, even down to the... Um, Houses of Assembly. So th we are still fully in election mode. And I think, um, you know, when you, you ask what, what can be done, I think we need to hold the party together, at least until every single electoral challenge is, is extinguished, and then the, there, sh there can and there should be a reckoning. But right now, I don't think it's the time for that reckoning. May 29 is just around the corner, um, and that's Inauguration Day. Um, and many, of course, are waiting to see what happens on Inauguration Day, but that day obviously is sacrosanct, whether we like it or not. Um, do you see people leaving the PDP? Is there going to be a crisscrossing as usual, uh, being that um, the APC's presidential candidate, who is now the president-elect, is on hand to become president May 29? Um, so, first of all, I think the May... 29 date is just it's just a date. Again, we still have a challenge. We believe we won the elections, and we are still. It, is it just a date? It's an inauguration day. President will be sworn it's, in, whether we whether we like it or not. It's, it's just a date. Um, really? Being sworn in doesn't doesn't mean you know our our challenge becomes moot or or is swept away. Um, even though he has been sworn in, if the Supreme Court finally rules that. Atiku Abubakar was validly elected. Atiku Abubakar at that point in time became the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, I think what, what um, is kind of more important to me is, again, I don't want us to look at this thing as just a presidential election. We have governors that will be sworn in. We won a bunch of, of seats. We won in Zamfara, for instance, that we never won before. So things are sort of like in stasis, you know, 2019 elections and the state of play between the APC and the PDP. It's sort of very similar to the 2023 um, situation. There haven't been a lot more, a lot of gains and uh, losses. Thankfully for us, Labour didn't make a lot of impact outside the presidential dent that they did make. You know, so the, so the, the balance of power still remains the same. So whether people will cross because the APC remains in power, I don't think so. Um, and again, we are holding on to the hope that the Supreme Court will do the right thing in our eyes and uh, rule that Atiku Abubakar was validly elected. So I don't, I don't, I don't think you will see this tsunami of defections um, that you sort of like imply might happen. Hmm. All right, Ose Aneni is a PDP chieftain. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Well, uh, what becomes of um, your presidential candidates and all those who are challenging uh, the president-elect's um, um, victory it remains to be seen. We cannot preempt the tribunal, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Thank you.
All right. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And that's the show tonight. Uh, don't forget, you can always pick up on all our episodes, our previous episodes on Plus TV Africa, uh, on our YouTube. Go subscribe and follow all our programs. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.